This is Dalton a TV friends. Welcome back to another edition of Edmonton Oilers Discussion here on the channel today. It's a quieter day, right? It's Monday. We don't have hockey until February 6th at this point. And well, end of the day, the Oilers are on a 16 game winning streak as well. So we don't have much to complain about, but we still do have stuff to talk about. We'll get into that here in a matter of moments. Before we go too far, if you're new to the channel or you're returning and haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I would love for you to do that. Today we're 200, officially at time of recording, away from 15,000 subscribers here on Dolany TV. So closing in on a major milestone and then we can kind of coast home the rest of the year without asking too much other than on the live streams. Bing bang, get to work and then we go for playoffs. All right. Friends, what do we know about the Edmonton Oilers? You are here for more than likely a trade deadline update today. And this is what it appears to be for the Edmonton Oilers. Is it is a reassess approach for the Oilers this uh, season, right? Last year it was more a wait and see what needs to happen because of cap, because of whatever the case might be. Well, for the Oilers this year, it is a reassess situation. Game in, game out, game on, game off, right? So... For the Oilers right now, you're on a 16-game win streak. You just added Corey Perry. You've got Dylan Holloway finally healthy again. And obviously the defense, the goaltending has figured itself out. The goals against are way down. We're second best in the league at keeping goals off the board, I guess is how you'd word that. That seems sideways to say about the Oilers, but it's true. And so when you look at this here, when you reassess, um, what does that mean? Well, the su success this team has dictates moves or the pieces, right? Whether the Oilers make a move for defense goaltending or a forward. And then as well, it dictates the pieces. Is it a big piece, medium piece, small piece, right? Are you talking like a top six forward? Are you talking to Nick Bugstad for the third, fourth line? Are you talking somebody on defense that would take Brett Kulak's spot or Cody Cece's spot? And are you talking about someone even now um, in terms of taking Calvin Picard's start as the backup or in terms of that third spot, which Jack Campbell and Ollie Rodrigue currently are kind of co-holding as the team holding down Bakersfield based on obviously cap and situation there. So when we get to point number three, the biggest need based on the most impactful piece added. So for the Oilers, as you look at it, as we reassess, as the success dictates what we need, the biggest piece will not be based on more or less need. It'll be more based on the most impactful. So, right, is the big piece, the big need is what's going to make the most impact, not what's going to fill the biggest need. For the Oilers right now, on a 16-game win streak, if you were to ask any hockey guy that says, what's the Oilers' biggest need? The Oilers' biggest need over the past five, six games has been extra goal scoring, right, is everybody's kind of gone quiet. Thankfully, McDavid and Drysdale have picked it up here the past few, but goal scoring's come way down along with the goals against, and as well, the goaltending's been amazing on this win streak. So when you look at the biggest need, it's hard to pin down just one thing or hard to pin down the thing. So when I sit here and say, is the Oilers are going to have to make the decision, as they did last year, on what would be the most impactful ad for the roster. And of course, the success this team has towards the trade deadline in March will dictate what that ends up being. So we move along to the needs ranked, which right now currently, I don't have numbers here. I'm not telling you number one is this, number two is that, or number three is this, right? I'm telling you right now, these are the Oilers' needs. Rank them however you want to rank them. And if obviously somebody's commenting something silly, in the comments section today, I'm going to take full time to go dunk from half court on that one because I just explained myself there. Secondary goalie, Ekholm-like upgrade on the right hand D, and a top six crash and bang goal scorer. You'll say, but why, Tice? We have Evander Kane. I'll tell you, because Evander Kane on the Edmonton Oilers, given the fact that you might be able to go upgrade the top six, and with Evander Kane's injury situation, you could technically add somebody up there and give Kane limited minutes in the playoffs, i.e. third line minutes to keep him healthy, because who knows what this Oilers roster looks like post deadline. So when you look at this, rank this however you want. These are just, I think, the three biggest current needs for the Edmonton Oilers roster based on what we're seeing right now. When you sit here and say secondary goalie, 
Again, I love Calvin Picard as much as the next guy. Friends, I want you to see that on camera. I love Calvin Picard, okay? This guy is a trooper. This guy's been through everything. He's a journeyman is literally what the term is for him. He has been in the AHL. He's been in the NHL. He's started. He's backed up. He's been a starter in the AHL. He's been a floater. He has been all across the NHL. However, here's the thing for us. You need a secondary goalie. Why do you need a secondary goalie, friends? Because I don't know fully... Given what Calvin Picard's been through in his career, given like everything wise, if I'm going to sit here and say Skinner, Picard, Campbell is who I want to ride going through the playoffs, right? It's not necessarily a knock against Picard. Like I said, love the guy. I, I know people have said I've taken knocks on him again. Situationally, he needs somebody else there to be beside him just based on kind of how playoffs work out. So when I'm sitting here saying secondary goalie, it doesn't mean a backup. It means a plan B in case of injury, right? So who backs up Picard if there's an injury? Would you want Jack Campbell there? I don't know. Again, if you do, that's fine. I'm not saying Campbell's a bad option. I'm saying we need some kind of secondary option. So if you're going out there addressing needs, that's something you could address. An home like upgrade on the right-hand defense. Again, friends, this goes back to um, the love-hate relationship with Cody Cece, right? I think Cody Cece is doing absolutely, again, similar to 22-23, where he just hmmed and hawed along and produced enough results to be on a team that got to the third round of the playoffs and was a decision or two by the NHL or a decision or two by shooting the puck away from making that a 4-2 series that would have been very reminiscent of Vegas this past year in terms of giving Colorado their toughest test on the way to the Cup. So, right, by virtue, let's look at this again. Um, again, is that the number one need? Is that the number three need? What? Right? See, that's what I'm saying. Is an Ekholm like upgrade on defense sounds fantastic. How do you fit it under the cap? How do you, who do you trade out? Is it Kulak? Is it CeCe? Make the pieces fit how you will. Again, that's just something that is identified that we know about. Top six crash and bang goal score. How are you making that work, right? Cap space, we'll talk about that here in a moment in the post-All-Star game stuff. But right now, cap space is maybe going to equal about a million point seven five if we really manage the uh, books down the stretch here uh, to sometime in March. So we got about a month to really manage the books properly, avoid injury, avoid LTIR use, and hopefully end up being able to acquire a player worth on a cap hit, your deal, over $3 million. That's kind of where you'd be looking. So can you get an impactful top six crash and bang goal scorer for that? I don't know. Again, success will dictate what need uh, gets worked on, right? Let's go back to this slide. How did I word that? Uh, success dictates moves slash pieces, right? If the Oilers don't need a top six crash and bang goal scorer, good, we move on. But that's, that's kind of that situation there. So that's the deadline update for you. Now, post All-Star Game, the Oilers are on a 16-game heater. Did I mention that? I think we've talked about that enough over the past weekend that we can shut up about that for a moment and move on to what happens next. The All-Star break is this weekend. Tyson, Tyson go to Edmonton. Tyson go kind of enjoy quiet season in Edmonton. Vegas, February 6th. Ducks, February 9th. Kings, February 10th. Where are all those games? They're on the road. Why is that important? Well, friends, let me tell you. The Oilers affiliate, right, the Bakersfield Condors, are going to be in the region at the same time. Of course, they're going to have some games uh, over the course of the next few days. I think they're in Tucson, then they're in Texas, right? They're all kind of in that same Pacific Division area of the AHL. And the bigger thing here for the Oilers is they're in that Pacific Division area of the AHL. So you look at this here, Vegas, Ducks, Kings. Easy, right? Easy. They're all within the same geographical area and they're all on the road. Why does that matter? I'm trying to get there. Phil Kemp doesn't need to be recalled. Why does that matter, Tice? Well, again, as we said, it's simply put for the Oilers, you save that cap space, right? You don't need that seventh defenseman on the roster during those three games. If there's an injury, you call them up. You don't need to have them, right? You can just have them sit in Bakersfield under the radar of the cap space police in the NHL, and you just sit there and you accrue some cap space 
over the next while. Well, from here, it's January 29th, you accrue cap space until roughly February 12th, when I assume the most logical move it would be then to recall Philip Kemp in time for the Wings game, which is February 13th at home. That's just doing some math. Where do we talk about Dylan Holloway and all of this? Well, friends, Dylan Holloway, I assume, would be a piece you recall exactly as of February 5th. I think I mentioned that post uh, post video yesterday after the uh, talking about the win streak. I think we talked about Dylan Holloway and his send down to the Bakersfield Condors. Again, this is not a penalty to uh, Holloway. This is not a Connor Brown should have went down situation. This is nothing more than saving cap space and getting a guy some games while we're stagnant on the schedule, right? The Oilers don't play for the next 10 days, so, well, as of yesterday. So why not get Dylan Holloway some games in Bakersfield and save daily cap hit? I think with him and Kemp down, it was like 8800 bucks a day, right? So over that course of that span, we're talking about fitting at the deadline another guy that could be worth $88,000 or something more, right? So again, that's another $150,000 salary uh, for the trade deadline. When you start doing retention, you start doing pick deals, it starts adding up. So that's really all we're at here, friends. Obviously, right now the trade deadline reassess, right? Reassess, success dictates, and the biggest need will be, or the biggest move need will be measured on impactful ability to the roster. Secondarily to that, kind of look at the needs that we currently have, rank them however you want, and then know that Dylan Holloway's back with the Oilers in time for the Vegas game. Phil Kemp, I, I would figure anyways, based on the math, doesn't come back up till the 12th. And then Hunky Dory, we're back on to this whole crazy February schedule that we got coming up, friends. Rest up. We're in for a good week of uh, quiet time. You see the set behind me has been changed up again a little bit here. Like, I've kind of had some quiet time, right? I waited out until things got quieter in the house this afternoon to obviously get you up a video. Friends, I'm Tyson, this is Stolen TV. I'm up on out of here.